After we have talked about the meaning of Islam, now we're going to go to the next part, which is the six beliefs. There are six beliefs in Islam. One is to believe in one God, Almighty Allah in Arabic. Second is to believe in the angels. Three is to believe in the scriptures of God. Four, to believe in the messengers of God. Five, to believe in the day of resurrection. And six, to believe in the divine destiny. So the first belief, the Muslims believe in one almighty God. Is he different God than what the Christians or Jews believe? We will come into this in details. As you see in the background, the word Allah in Arabic. Allah is the Arabic word for God with capital G. It's very much when we say Dios in Spanish, Dieu in French. In the Quran, God says, there is no deity worthy to be worshipped but Allah. And Allah means God. If we open the Arabic Bible on the first page and we look for the word Allah, you'll find that the word Allah is mentioned seven times in the first paragraph, 38 times in the first page, and thousands of times in the whole Bible. That means the Arab Christians, when they refer to their God, they refer to their God by saying Allah, Allah. So when Muslims say La ilaha illallah, that means there is no God but Allah. And that shouldn't be offensing you because it expresses the monotheist faith. The word Allah is exist in the Rig Veda, which is the scripture of the Hindu. The word God is not the accurate translation of Allah because the word God can be derivative Godfather. It can be plural gods or it can be female, like when we say goddess. But Allah is no other word can be expressed to the Almighty God with capital G. Allah has no partners. He is the creator. He is neither male or female. He is the provider. When I say he is not a male or female, but when we say he, this is a royal he, not because he is a male or female, but this is the best way to express God, Allah. He is unique. He is beyond our imagination. God says in the Quran, there is nothing like unto him. Where can we find God in the creation? God says in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 190, Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of the night and the day are signs for those of understanding. Where can we find God within ourselves? God says in the Quran, chapter 41, verse 53, we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. But is it not sufficient concerning your Lord that he is over all things a witness? You are the sign of God's existence. There are so many scholars in the history that they believed in God and they believed in the existence of Allah, such as Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, Pascal, and Kant. For example, Rene Descartes, he said, I doubt that there is God, therefore I think. I think, then I exist. I exist, then I am created. And since I did not create myself, then God created me. So also Rene Descartes said, those who do not think, then they are not exist. The second belief is to believe in the existence of the angels. The angels are the creatures of Allah. They are created from light. They do not have free will. Each angel does a specific task. 
So we have an angel that protect us. We have an angel that he brings the message of God to the prophet. And he is the angel Gabriel, or in Arabic, we call Jibril. We have angels that praise God day and night. So each angel does a specific task. The third belief after believing in God and the angels is to believe in the scriptures. There are five scriptures that they were mentioned in the Quran, which is the last revelation and the last book that it was revealed from Allah Almighty. And these five scriptures are one, the Torah, that it was revealed to Moses, peace be upon him, from Allah. Second, the scrolls of Abraham, that they were revealed to Abraham, peace be upon him, from Allah. Third, the Psalms of David, that were revealed to David, peace be upon him, from Allah. Fourth, the Gospel of Jesus, peace be upon him, that it was revealed to Jesus, peace be upon him, from God. And lastly, the Quran, that it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from Allah as well. And there are other scriptures, but the Quran does not mention their name. What does the Quran say about the Torah? The Quran says, Indeed, we sent down the Torah in which was guidance and light, the prophets who submitted to Allah. What does the Quran say about the gospel? It says, And we sent, following in their footsteps, Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming that which came before him in the Torah. And we gave him the gospel in which was guidance and light, and confirming that which preceded it of the Torah as guidance and instruction for the righteous. That's why Muslims cannot burn any faith scriptures because Muslims believe in them. Muslims cannot call the prophets any names because they believe in them. Muslims are not supposed to laugh at any religion and mock any religion. Angel Gabriel carried the message 100% correct to the messengers. The Quran's language is the only language that is still alive till now. Yes, we have many translations of the Quran in many languages, but it is easy and accessible for the people who would like to learn the original scripture and the original manuscripts of the Quran is to learn the Arabic language, and it is still alive until now. The Quran has been maintained in the original language. We have millions of Muslims who memorize the Quran from cover to cover without any mistake in Arabic. And most of these Muslims don't even speak Arabic, but they memorize the Quran in Arabic. The Quran is the last revelation of Allah Almighty. The Quran is the principal source for every Muslim faith and practice. The Quran deals with every subject in life. The Quran offers law for a just society and proper human conducts and equitable economic principle. Muslims call that law, Sharia law. Quran deals with the relationship between the person and his Lord. And the Quran deals with the relationship between a person and the others. The first chapter of the Quran called Al-Fatiha or the opener. I would like to recite it for you in Arabic and then translate it in English. It goes like this. A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم 
غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين It says in the name of Allah the most compassionate the most merciful All praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, the compassionate, the merciful, sovereign of the day of judgment. It is you we worship and you we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have evoked your anger or of those who are astray. Muslims recite the opening chapter at least 17 times during their five prayers a day. But then why people are from different backgrounds fighting all the time? God says in the Quran, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Notice that he did not say the most noble of you are the white people. Notice that he did not say that the most noble of you are the black people or the American people or the Arab people. He said the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. The fourth belief after believing in God, believing in the angels, believing in the scriptures, which is to believe in the messenger of Allah. The messengers of Allah are the best human beings that walked on earth. They do not commit major sins. None of them is divine or the son of the divine. Jesus Christ, for example, is a messenger of God like any other messenger. Jesus Christ is one of the best people walked the earth according to Islam. He was born miraculously without a father. His mother by the Quran is the purest woman who walked the face of the earth. Jesus was mentioned 25 times in the Quran. Lady Mary was mentioned 36 times in the Quran. There are three chapters at least in the Quran that talk only about Jesus and his mother. Chapter number three is called Al-Imran, the family of Mary, peace be upon her. Chapter 17, and it is named by Mary, peace be upon her. And chapter number five, it's called Al-Ma'ida, and it means the supper table or the food table. The Quran says, Say, O believers, we have believed in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the descendants of Israel and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims in submission to him. So as I mentioned before, Islam means to submit to one God and worship him purely and live in peace. After we talked about believing in God, believing in the scriptures, believing in the angels and believing in the prophets, now we're going to talk about the day of judgment. Death is not the end. Death is the beginning of the true life. Everyone is going to be resurrected after death. And we're going to be standing before Allah. And Allah is going to be holding us accountable of what we believed and what we did in our life. Everyone is going to be reading their books of deeds. So the believers and the ones who did good deeds will go to heaven and the wicked ones will go to hellfire. The last belief is to believe in the divine destiny. Nothing happens without the knowledge of Allah. Allah has prescribed everything from the beginning. He knows the past, the present, and the future. Sometimes we exaggerate in our feelings, and we don't know 
what is the wisdom behind things that is happening in our life. So if we really don't know what is right and what is wrong for us, so why are we exaggerating in our feelings? So for example, if my brother died, God forbid, in a car accident, instead of saying, oh God, why did you take him away? You know, that's not fair and things like that. Believing in the divine destiny really changes our feeling of happiness and sadness to acceptance. Allah knows the past, the present, and the future. But does that contradict with the freedom of choice? Not at all. You know, God has the best example. Let's say that there is a mother and she has a son that he is four years old. And she knows her son very well. And she tells him, don't play with the ball over here because there is a vase. And if you break that vase, I'm going to be punishing you. Now the mother told her son the rules and she told him what is the consequences of breaking the rules. The mother knows her child and she knows that her child is stubborn and he will not listen to her. But she gave him the free choice anyway. So the child goes and play in that area and he breaks the vase. And because he did that, he's grounded. Same thing when we talk about Allah, but Allah has the best example. Allah knows everything that we do. Allah set the rules for us what to do and what not to do, right? But also Allah gave us the free choice and he knows what we're going to be choosing in advance. So that does not contradict with our freedom of choice. Let's recap. The beliefs of Islam is to believe in one almighty God, Allah. Second, to believe in the angels. Three, to believe in the scriptures. Four, to believe in the messengers of God. Five, to believe in the day of resurrection. And six, to believe in the divine destiny. Muslims believe that there is only one God. Muslims believe that there is only one humankind. That means there is only one sender and only one recipient. Why would someone think that the sender can send contradicting messages? To confuse them? So it's never many religions. It was always one religion. Not the religion of Muhammad alone. Not the religion of the Moses alone. No, it's the religion of God. Allah in Arabic, Ilah in Hebrew. God communicated to the messenger Muhammad 1,400 years ago, Jesus 600 years before him, 20 to John the Baptist. One God, one humankind, one religion, many messengers. All of them had the same doctrine, worship God alone and do not associate any partners with him. If there is only one religion, then it should be suitable for all people from different backgrounds. Islam is a revolution against any bad tradition. What is suitable for people? Islam is like water. Water has no smell, it has no taste and no color. It is neutral and anyone can drink from it. However, there are some people who put some culture in there and they make Islam has a different color or different taste. That is not the true Islam. Islam is the only religion that it's not called after someone. For example, Buddhism was named after Buddha. Hinduism was named after India. Christianity was named after Christ. Judaism was named after Judas and so on.